160. He's gone. Hey, you would think the changing wheels would be an easy, easy, easy thing, right? You just pop off the old lugs, pop some new ones in. Well, on the other side, that was the case. On this side, however, everything was rusted solid, like so. And so I ended up having to plasma cut everything out and buy new hardware having to go to two different stores to find the right right lug studs the right lug nuts fortunately <laughs> they're gonna be end up being different on uh so clear on that side somebody replaced them with something else but at this point i don't really care so there's our new studs set in their holes now we just gotta get the 20 ton press here set up real quick then we can just press those bad boys in here we go new studs on just gotta put the new wheel on uh, i left the brake as it is it's basically fully disengaged because there's there's zero chance i can get this to work without all new plumbing and so since i'm not gonna do that right now anyway we're just reassembling it this way i'm gonna get the new wheel on here so that we can at least move the boat around if we need to that boys and girls why we call them projects because something that literally should take 10 minutes changing wheels and tires ends up taking like two hours over two days because it's just bullshit another one of those little things right real simple do a fucking transmission oil change not a big deal pull out the dipstick oh wait the dipstick has fused itself transmission casing i had to run the engine for like 25 minutes till everything got warm enough that i could hammer this loose finally so we'll be off to the dealer tomorrow to see if we can get another one of these uh, in the meantime i'm gonna clean it up and uh, change out the fluid and stick it back in there. Well, it's not exactly rocket science change transmission oil. I'm using, this transmission takes two quarts. I got about a quart and a half out of it. Pretty good considering I think it's got an oil cooler somewhere, but I'm using this stuff. <clears throat> this is left over from the truck. It's basically Dextron three fluid, which is what this transmission calls for. And it calls for two quarts. So that's what we're gonna put into it. I already put one quart in and here goes number two. All right, next thing we gotta tackle on this boat is installing our new Bluetooth head unit. And these things get smaller and better every single year so in addition to our head unit uh it comes with a microphone that we're going to install um i don't really know how well uh bluetooth caller stuff is going to work on a boat but it's there might as well install it same amount of work it comes with a nice little remote and it comes with a harness and i've already taken the opportunity to tie up this these are for uh, steering wheel controls and the external line that goes to a to an amplifier i'm not going to be running a sub and uh, maybe eventually in the future but i can always go in there and just cut this off if i need to run a sub now these might look a little bit um kind of intimidating like oh look at all these wires where do they go well the truth is the red and the orange which is the illumination and accessory line which is what goes to our ignition when we turn the key so i went ahead and put a little ring lead on there so we're going to tie this straight to the ignition our yellow wire here is the battery we're also going to tie that straight to the ignition where the battery comes in basically this is just there to make sure the time all of your settings get saved this is just basically always connected to the battery our black is our ground i don't know where we're going to stick that yet but it's a little bit of a longer lead so i didn't bother extending it so we're just going to find somewhere, either put a ring lead or a spade on it and ground it. Now the rest of these wires, there's two wires per set of speakers. There's four sets of speakers and they're matched. So the two grays go together, two greens go together, two whites and the two purples go together. And so we're just going to go and look. And this is a pretty standard layout, this gray, white, green, purple. So we're just going to go and look at how the old one was set up and probably just cut and splice into that as well. And I'm going to do my best to solder everything that I can. Um, it's always better to solder stuff than it is to crimp stuff. But sometimes, you know, you just can't get your hands in there and, and it is what it is. The other thing I bought was this. This is made by uh, the company called Metra. And it's a marine radio cover. And this actually latches and it has, um, I don't know if you guys can tell or not. But it's got a nice rubber gasket right here. So you should do a good job to keep the water out. It also comes with this, which uh, I assume goes back here. And basically helps create a gasket layer between the dashboard and the unit. And if we look at it... I, I imagine that this middle part gets punched out probably or will have to get cut out because obviously this takes up the full width of this thing. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a little air die grinder, cut out these two pieces. I think it's universal. They're designed to go with like a, a traditional like dial marine radio. So and there's, there's pieces back here that basically just let you get a nice easy thin cut. Now once we cut all this shit out, <clears throat> got back to the original install, it looks like the original install was actually done correctly. And one of the cool things that you can do is, right, so these are labeled rear left speaker. <clears throat> but since they go to speaker wire, you don't really know if it's accurate anymore, right? And so what you can actually do is you can uh, plug your phone into a standard 3.5mm, use some jumper wires, and <clears throat> basically jumper the signal. 
Now, because these are big old six and a half speakers and this is a little cell phone, it's not going to play very loud even at full volume. But you can definitely hear the rear left speaker is playing, so we know that that uh, designation is correct. And we can go around and check to make sure all the other speakers are playing accurately as well. Well, there we go. All the wiring is done. Obviously, it's just chilling here. I just wanted to test it. We got the ground running over here, and then we got the uh, battery running to the battery side of the ignition, and the starter running to the uh, uh, ignition position of the ignition. So if we turn this off, it turns off. We turn it back on. Boom. Awesome. So now we just got to clean it up, get the uh, mounts and stuff in there. So there we go, there's our final installation. If you reach under here, pop it, it opens up. Unfortunately, the bezel won't quite fit in there correctly. Um, and I may grind it down a little bit to make it fit later, but it's not really a big deal. Uh, I mean, it could use a little equalizer work, but phone connects right to it. So we can basically seal up the dash. <coughs> Do a little zip tie action. We've got a little microphone up here for Bluetooth calls. Like I said, I don't know how well it's going to work in the boat, but if you got it, use it. So, so the next thing I want to attempt to tackle, or at least get started with, is polishing uh, all this green oxidation off. And what we're going to use for that is this 3M rubbing compound. You really want kind of a uh, heavy oxidation remover. You don't really want to use stuff like this on your paint, like on a on a car. You want to use something a little lot finer. But this stuff is good for pulling it off. We got an old pad and I put the six inch uh, unit back on here to get as much surface area as we can. Cause you don't need a whole lot of force. The rubbing compound handles it pretty well. As well as Jimmy Dean's juice and a towel. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna first wipe off an area, uh, make sure it's clean. Then we're gonna attack it with the orbital polisher. So there we go, we've cleaned everything up and now we can use the orbital polisher. So the orbital polisher, what you wanna do is you wanna take your pad and you wanna Put it up in your lap, kind of like this. Make sure you shake up the uh, rubbing compound. And then you want to put like three or four little dollops on the pad. And then on your work area, just start going like this. Just get it all nice and moved around. Because you don't want a large concentration of this stuff anywhere. You want it nice and even. So then you just start doing it passes, about five pounds of head pressure, up and down, back to front, don't work in circles, only work in lines. over here you're going to see the stark contrast so this is an area we worked over obviously it's not perfect you know we're, this boat is a little too oxidized to bring back to absolute perfection without you know a lot more work but for instance here's an area we didn't work on and you can see this looks a hell of a lot worse so if we bring it over here if we can get this sort of level of niceness throughout the boat i'm going to be pretty happy like this right here and i mean this is smooth as glass right now what we're going to do is we're going to put a little bit of wax over it and that will help uh, kind of bring a little bit more luster to it and help protect it. So this side of the boat is all done. Uh, we got all the buff job done and the wax done. I mean it's not like an industrial grade but it's pretty good because if you look over here this is the side I haven't even worked on yet. I haven't really touched. You can see it's all oxidized still. So, got the back to do, got this other side to do, but uh, not too big of a deal. Just buff it out and wax it.